Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, today, I'm, it's going to be a quick video, I'm just going to walk you through uh, another uh, reflected cross-site scripting vulnerability I found. Uh, well, more specifically, I found uh, HTML injection. And it's um, it's got a, a WAF on there, it's got CloudFront, and shout out to CloudFront, they do an excellent job. Uh, I have had quite the struggle executing JavaScript payloads. Um, and we haven't got anything to work yet. Very confident we will, but uh, we have enough for a decent proof of concept and the vulnerability was still accepted as uh, as high according to CVSS scoring. So I'm gonna walk you through uh, how I went about testing this, right? So uh, this is against the following company. Um, obviously they are a relatively large uh, corporation. So. Uh, they're a non-profit and shout out to them. Their security team has been great uh, and thank you to them for allowing me to disclose this. So we found the, the search bar here, right? And this is the first thing I test is obviously inputs, right? Uh, is the input to the search bar reflected in the URL, um, right? So to put in test, uh, we will actually click the search bar and we'll put in test. And we can see, yes, okay. So this is the first milestone. All right, we can see test is injected as uh, new search equals to true and query text is test. All right, so we can see now again, uh, another thing that gives us the green light that we go, hey, uh, this might be, you know, this might be good to, to look into is we get test reflected in the HTML of the page. We can inspect it uh, and we can see it's inside uh, span elements, right? So we're going to have a look for where test actually appears. And we can see here that it, it it's inside. Um, and we look for basically the cleanest places reflected like tags. It don't really, they're easy to break out of essentially, right? We're looking for places it's reflected where we have the potential to break out and try and get some payloads um, in there, right? So we can see we're inside these I tags, okay? And we can see this is how it is closed off. So now that we have this information, uh, we're just gonna try some simple payloads, right? I, uh, and we'll put in, you know, um, an SVG tag and close it off. We can see is temporarily unavailable, uh, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we will inspect the page because I don't believe that and we're going to reload it and we can see that we get a 403. Uh, looking into this, we can see that we are blo uh, blocked by CloudFront. Okay, so we can see CloudFront is in some capacity uh, protecting them, right? And it's doing a wonderful job, right? I did get some payloads past this. Uh, I'm not going to disclose them. Uh, just because, you know, obviously CloudFront is a very widely used system and just for uh, ethical reasons and to be compliant with YouTube's guidelines, I'm not going to show how I got past it to execute JavaScript. However, I can show how I got HTML injection. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do just a test of H1 tags, right? Super basic and it's already going to be in the site. So there is less chance and it would be very tricky for a, uh, a WAF to filter it, right? And we can see, boom, okay? We can see our HTML, uh, our H1 tags are successfully reflected into the site's content in two places, in fact. Okay, we've got that and we've got here. So now we can have some fun, right? We have HTML injection. So we can, we can not do that. Uh, we, we can open up my little cheat sheet I've got here, and uh, we can get some nice uh, proof of concept payloads for the company. Okay, we can execute this one, uh, and we can see uh, full reflected HTML injection proof of concept by zero days. Uh, and you can see that's properly injected in there as HTML tags. It's not just the search output because, well, I mean, it's, it's red, right? Um, and that would just you know, uh, perhaps if there's a less tech savvy team, that'll get rid of any confusion that might happen in triaging. Now, 
We're going to try something else. Uh, and this is good for proving impacts. Can we add an href to a site, right? Because uh, obviously this has things like phishing implications and we can see that we can, right? We've got login here and it's like, hmm. And if we click login here, uh, you'll note that we are directed to, redirected, excuse me, to the CIA, all right? Uh, obviously that could be changed to an attacker controlled server. Um, and as you can see, obviously we can break out uh, here as well because it's just reflected in the URL, okay? Uh, and obviously the prerequisite for this, uh, and the important thing here is it is reflected in the URL, meaning an attacker could share this to a victim uh, and actually execute it because otherwise it would be self XSS uh, where the victim would actually have to paste in the JavaScript code. And at that point, I mean, it's just kind of useless because you could just make them run it like more important things. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's important that this is a shareable URL, right? Um, it's not just a thing where I've pasted in JavaScript. You can obviously go ahead and visit this URL on any browser uh, and you're going to get this little, um, once it actually loads, it's a bit slow. We'll give it a sec. Yeah, we're going to get the, the login here uh, button. Well, href rather. And, you know, obviously this has phishing implications like, um, you know, fake captures, like, you know, you've been logged out of your account, please re-sign in. Um, like getting them to, you know, go to an attacker controlled site um, and perhaps hook themselves on beef or whatever it is, right? Um, so this is a great way to prove impact with HTML injection. And as you can see, this affects... Um, the entire URL parameter. Uh, again, we can just put in you know, a test parameter uh, and we can see the results. And you'll notice that with, with cases like these where there's a non-generic breakout sequence, uh, if you're just using automated tools, it's not gonna find it, right? Uh, like we can we can run like, you know, locks, uh, shout out to uh, lossec, um, you know, coffin XP. This is GitHub, I believe. Uh, you know, it's a great tool. However, it's not going to find things like this, right? We can put in our URL. Um, we can do payloads access txt, and you know, it can uh, go ahead and test. I've added my own uh, HTML HTML payloads into that file as well. Uh, I'm just going to stop it here because it's going to take a while. But it's not going to find it because there's custom breakout sequences. Uh, obviously, you can append your own things to it, and then perhaps it will. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's kind of an interesting um, case where a lot of people will use automated tools like Logs or XSS Sniper or whatever you're using, right? And it's not going to find these vulnerabilities in the majority of cases. Uh, and they do require manual testing, which is why I highly, highly recommend that people actually, you know, go through, look at the tech stack, go, hmm, okay, this is interesting. Um, what can we, what can we get here, right? Um, and then test stuff, right? What gets reflected in the URL? Um, and then can you just mess with those parameters, right? Like it's very important to look at things manually and just kind of poke around with stuff and see what happens. Um, without without further ado, excuse the random door noise, uh, without further ado, I'm gonna wrap up this video. I have another video coming out soon where I, uh, I get a bug bounty on a program uh, which allowed me, I was able to bypass mod security WAF, um, which is very exciting. I'm gonna, they skewer it a little bit just to be compliant with YouTube. Uh, but, you know, I've done some live demos and things like that on my own lab environment. Uh, I hope you guys got some value out of this video. And yeah, have an amazing rest of your day. Peace.